Hi guys, it's Friday night here in Manila and I'm going to go ahead and record our video for Saturday. Uh, it's going to be a little different than the usual program we have on Saturdays of comparison and review of some type of car or die cast. This is going to be the Mopar Challenge and this was started by Paul Schwach or Schwach. Uh, once again, sorry Paul if I'm pronouncing your last name wrong. Um, this challenge was probably the most complicated one for me because I'm a big Mopar fan and I have over 300 uh, 164th Mopars in my collection so trying to narrow it down to 10 was impossible for me. So uh, <clears throat> I narrowed it down to 20 actually, which is still a high number, double than what you guys have been doing, but I kind of put it into four categories. Six Chase Mopars, six regular uh, premium style Mopars, and six race car Mopars along with two trucks. Um, and I'll explain that why I've done it this way in a moment. Uh, but just starting out, there's no better place to have a Mopar Challenge than Mr. Norm's Grand Spalding Dodge from Chicago. This is probably the most iconic Mopar dealership in history. Uh, everyone who is a Mopar fan knows this dealership, knows about the GSS demons and darts, and then the Supercharger funny car, the Challenger funny car from Grand Spalding Dodge. So, <clears throat> it's part of Mopar history, kind of like the Ram Chargers and Sox and Martin and so on. So, very iconic place. That's why I had this diorama built because, once again, I'm a huge Mopar fan and it's a great way to display a lot of my Dodges and sometimes a couple Plymouths like today. So, on this side, we got all of the regular Mopars that we're going to be going through, starting here to the back wall. In the front row are the six chases that I picked, and then I will swing you around over here to the other side. And this is where the six race cars are sitting, and the two trucks in the background. Uh, also, in the showroom, I turn on the light today so you guys can see in the showroom. There are a few cars in there that I really like too, but didn't quite make the cut, but still very nice items. Um, so, yeah, and I just left them in there and put the 20 on the outside. So, let's get us stabilized over here on the side in the bigger parking lot area. As I said in one of my previous videos, I kind of had to redo this uh, dealership dio because of my baby. He was getting a little out of control. Uh, with shaking this table and the table's not so stable so cars were rolling all over the place so actually that's why there's no big parking lot full of cars anymore so I'm going to go ahead and start with the trucks since we're already here so these two trucks I absolutely love in my collection that's why I couldn't cut them out of the Mopar challenge they're too special to me um, this is the 70 Power Wagon. This is the rare one from the J Case Garage series. Um, it's actually probably uh, my second favorite from the Garage series. I want to find the green one with the white insert and white top. That one's really cool. Then they had a orange and black one from the Walmart box set. But this is the rarest one out of all of them. It came from a J case, which was almost impossible to find in the States with a few other pretty desirable cars uh, in that case. So very nicely done by Hot Wheels. A black metallic with yellow inserts for the two-tone Dodge on the quarter or bedside. Uh, could have used some detail painting on the grill and stuff, but hey, I'm not going to be too picky about it. The power wagon on the back tailgate, um, very nicely done by Hot Wheels. One of my favorite trucks in my collection. Uh, I'm more of a Chevy truck guy than a Mopar truck guy, to be honest, 
but still love this uh, Hot Wheels casting. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I know they just released it again in the main line. I need to pick up a couple of those and maybe will swap them later with these style wills. Would look really great. Um, second truck is the all famous Little Red Wagon based on the Dodge A100 pickup. These are very cool little trucks, vans, uh, whatever you want to call them. They were originally mid-engine, so it was perfect setup for a wheel stander. And this is probably one of the most iconic wheel standers from Mopar. Um, actually, probably the Hemi under glass may be the most iconic, but I think everyone knows the little red wagon and the Hemi under glass. So this is a very cool version of it by Johnny Lightning from the Showstopper series. Very nice with their decals. The scaling is very good. Uh, everything about this one is really good. I know sometimes I criticize the funny cars with the underscaling and things like that, but this one is pretty much spot on, I think. Very nice chassis and such. Could use a little more detail, but hey, it's not too bad. It's better than the funny cars, I think. So, very nice one from Johnny Lightning. Even the batteries, detail painted, the little gas tank, the Hemi, and it's actually die cast, the parachute, everything. Very nice. Lee Dunn by Johnny Lightning. <clears throat> so, that's why I could not leave these two trucks out. I could have put the little red wagon in the um, drag racing cars, but I wanted to pick a Trans Am series car for one of the six race cars that I picked. So this is Sam Posey's 70 Challenger TA that literally raced in the TA series. Um, this is a vintage racing Hot Wheels casting, very nicely done. The best rendition of this car ever made, in my opinion. You get the big front spoiler, which is accurate. Uh, scoop could have been a little bigger, but hey, not bad. Um, the wheels are spot on. The stance is spot on with this car. Um, the decals, everything, very nicely done. The painted tail lights and such, no spoiler. I don't think it had a big spoiler, maybe just a little spoiler like this. I think this one's nicer than Green Light's rendition of it, in my opinion. So that's why I picked this one. Plus, I only have the green machine of this from Green Light, and it wasn't one of my favorites to make the cutoff for the chase cars but this one definitely one of my favorite uh race cars from mopar in my collection now these next two you guys have put in your uh top 10 mopars a lot of you i've seen put snake the hot wheels snake plymouth um cuda funny car in your uh, in your uh, mopar challenge it, because it is one of the most iconic Mopars of all time. Very nicely done by Hot Wheels with this newer revised uh, casting that they made for the Drag Strip Demon series back in 09. So great uh, casting. Beautifully done. Much better than the original one released in 69. But hey, it was 69 and it was made for a kid's toy. So... That's why it looked a little cartoonish in my opinion. But these are more for the adult collector. These are from the Team Transporters. I do have the RLC um, Club uh, Transporters from back in 2011, which are just a hair bit nicer than these. Not much, just a little bit, because this is lacking the stars in the stripe, which they did have the stars in the blue stripe on both of them originally. So that's one of the details it's lacking. But actually, the 
paint on the team transporters, like the clear coat that they use is much nicer. So that's why I chose these. Plus I didn't feel like taking the other ones out of the display case again. You guys seen them in one of my previous videos of uh, Snake and Mongoose uh, review and comparison a couple months ago on a Saturday. So here's the Mongoose one, same thing, Team Transporters, except this is based on the 7071 Duster uh, that McEwen made famous. These are very nicely done, even like the front tampos, Mongoose on the front valence panel. Uh, the grill is nicely done, the lights are painted, very cool die-cast car, and I don't know why it doesn't want to focus in on the front again. There we go. So, beautiful tampos on this. Yeah, so they did a very nice job on these castings. This is another one that was revised for the Drag Strip Demons. It was also originally released in 68 or 69, an original red line car. That was nice for its time but the new castings are much better now the next one from the mopar racing another icon in mopar history dick landy and i have a couple other cars of landy like his dart his challenger but i love a 65 cornet altered wheelbase one of my favorite nostalgic cars in drag racing is the AWBs where they altered the wheelbase and moved the rear end forward and moved the front wheels forward to kind of I guess do the perfect weight transfer when launching these cars that was the whole theory behind it so I do absolutely love these AWB old early 60s Dodges and Plymouths but I especially like a 65 Cornet. It's nice and plain looking, the flat grill, uh, no things that like stick out. Like some of the 63s, 64s had some really crazy looking front ends. I like the 65 Cornet because it has that plain flat grill. Landy's Dodge, very nicely done with the decals and everything by Hot Wheels. The stack style injection, very cool casting, love it. Have a couple other ones from the Drag Strip Demon series, the original ones, and the one that they just recently released again in series three last year, I believe. So here's another icon from, uh, sorry about that, guys, bumped the camera, from the Mopar stable of drag racing. The Mopar Missile. Um, this one I think is more popular than the Cuda that they had back in 7071. This guy came out in late 72. It's a based on a 73 Duster. I think this one is more well known than the Cuda, at least by me. I remember this one more than the Cuda. Uh, I don't even think you can get the CUDA in 164th, although Johnny Lightning may have released one. I'm not sure. This came from the Vintage Racing Series, so this was released in 2012 or 13, right after Drag Strip Demons Series 2. They called it Quits of Drag Strip Demons and uh, started the Vintage Racing and only ran vintage racing for one year with a 30 car set, which was a mix of NASCAR, Trans Am, and drag racing. They had some really cool pro stock cars in that series. I was debating on whether or not to use this one or the Sox and Martin one, but I decided to use the Sox and Martin 68 CUDA which is the next and last of the drag racing cars. And this, as I was commenting on Paul's uh, Mopar uh, challenge, this one has the common wheel variant, the five slot wheels. Paul's had the rare five spoke variant. So Paul's got the rare one. If you guys have the one with the bigger five spokes, then that's the rare one. This is the common one, but still hard to get and going up in value. Very nice one to have. Um, 
as I said, I got their dust or two from Vintage Racing, but this one here I think is a little more iconic, although the duster is pretty well remembered too by drag racing fans. Actually, they had a lot of really cool cars. They even raced a super bird for a little while in drag racing, which was kind of unheard of because they were designed for NASCAR. They even had um, a couple of Dodges that they ran, so very well known with a lot of cars. But I think the Duster and the 68 Barracuda were the most well known. So now we're going to start with the chase cars. And the reason I did the chase, because a lot of them would make it in the top 10, but there's so many of them that I like, and I would say one third of my Mopar collection is probably chase pieces. So I think I have close to, maybe not quite 100 chase pieces, Mopar chase pieces yet, but I would say a good 80 or so. So this is one of my favorite because of the pro stock look. This is actually nicer than the Hot Wheels one just because it's kind of tubbed. It's got the bigger slicks in the back, the skinny front runners. It's got that 60s style paint job with the direct connection like heart um, with the devil's tail, I call it there and it's very nicely done. Even the red tinted headlight lenses cross ram hemi opening hood very cool based on that 68 hemi super stock the uh, barracuda made in collaboration with mopar and hearst they did i think a hundred dust or a hundred uh barracudas and a hundred darts i really love the dart but nobody makes uh 164th casting I need to have one custom made with a Hot Wheels casting. Hot Wheels actually does a really nice job with the duster, or with the dart casting. Sorry, I keep wanting to call it a duster. So this is very nicely done by M2. Love this one. It came from the Wild Card series. Not sure which release, but they only made 500 of these, and I'm happy to have one in my collection. So that kind of gives us the transition from the race cars to the chase cars because it's a pro stock car going to the chase cars now. This is my favorite super, Mopar. Super Treasure Hunt Mopar of the new Dodge Challenger Demon. Love this car. Um, love the real version of it. But this is the best... Uh, one by Hot Wheels because it's got the rubber tires, the Spectre Flame Red paint. Just wish it had a little more detail on the headlights and such, but sometimes people put the red lenses on the headlights, so it's really not a big downside on the headlight part. But um, on the rear tail lights, it kind of is a downfall because there's nothing there. But all the other tampos are nicely done. The graphics on the side are not overdone. It looks really nice and tasteful. But once again, red tail lights usually on these cars, so really you can get away with it without the tampos on this one. The TH tampo and the deck lid. I actually bought, I think, three or four of these. I have two that are carded still, and then I have this loose one. So really like this one. I have pretty much all the other Mopar rubber tire treasure hunts, but that's my favorite, even over the 06 General and the 08 70 Roadrunner. Um, so the next chase is this guy here. He was actually even in my top 10 challenge over my overall top 10 favorite cars in my collection. So this is the Green Machine uh, GL Muscle Hemi Cuda. I'm not sure which release, but it was originally like a Panther Pink or Moulin Rouge, whatever uh, Plymouth was. Plymouth was one, Dodge was the other, but they were both the same color. Um, very cool 71. Love the front ends on the 71 Cuda, the grill, the double headlights, the fish gill fenders. Very nice. It's very easy to tell 71 from the rest because they're the only ones of the fish guild fenders and with the double headlights and that grill is iconic 
to the tail lights, everything. So very cool car. Green wheels, green body. This is where I find the green wheels acceptable. If it's got the green body too, I just think it's really cool. It kind of looks like something a chase car should look like. I don't really care so much for just the green wheels and then regular paint on the body and so on. And I have one rendition of this car, I believe with the silver painted rallies and it's a green machine with the green body and I actually prefer the green wheels over the silver painted rallies. It looks, like I said, it looks very suiting for the chase car. So, Next one, another green machine. This is the 70 Roadrunner, which you guys seen in my video of the 70 Plymouth B bodies. This is a very cool one. Um, should have been Hemi Orange, actually, but it's got the green body, so that's one reason I really like it, and it's tastefully done. Uh, this could have actually been a factory car. Uh, with this color green. I just really like the green body green machines. So that's why this greenie made it. So these are the only two greenies that made it. And then next is the M2 Super Chases. So this is the 69 Roadrunner. This was the um, third Super Chase released in the Detroit Muscle Series. Supposedly they only made 108 of each of the chrome ones, so I have two of these actually. I was fortunate enough to get two of them. And the only thing that doesn't make this accurate with a six-pack car is the post. I think all of them were hard tops. There were no post six-pack cars. But the lift-off hood is very accurate on these. The six-pack air cleaner, six-pack 440. Very cool car. Very rare car, too. Um, just love the way it looks in chrome. I have one of the... They, in two, called these Sky Hoods. This is the only Sky Hood car that was accurate, actually, with the lift-off hood. Uh, the Chevelle and the Mustang was not accurate because they were hinged hoods. So this is the only one that was suiting with the Sky Hood. But they weren't too popular. So they quit making them, and they actually hinged the lift-off hood, which was kind of a mistake, I think. But hey, still, yet yeah, I got the Super Chase with the lift-off hood. Very cool. So now, the next one is probably the Grell of all of the Super Chase uh, muscle cars from Detroit Muscle. Not only Mopars, but this is actually... The most popular and probably the most valuable of the Super Chases. Um, very cool, all chrome Daytona. I have the 10th anniversary gold one, but as you can see, it's like a mirror. Very nice. Um, but the gold one didn't make the cut either. I wanted to get the uh, 68 Barracuda in there. Uh, so that's what replaced the gold one. Was going to put the gold one in this uh, top Mopar challenge, but I just couldn't. So the hideaway headlights are based on the plastic interior, I think, or something. But there's a reason they painted them silver. I think they're plastic inserts. But very cool all-chrome Dodge Daytona. So... Now let's move to the regulars. This is one of the old school, early 60s iconic Mopars. The 63 Plymouth Belvedere Max Wedge car. Very beautiful casting by Hot Wheels. I couldn't picture this car any better with just the plain red paint, the uh, red interior. It looks very um, accurate like for factory type super stock car with the red painted steel wheels and then it's got the wider ones in the back with like a slick type look very nicely done by Hot Wheels this is from their garage series back in 2011 could have used a little more detailing on the headlights but hey not too bad because they even did the Plymouth emblem on the hood the hood pins everything the scoop on the hood is accurate 
They even did the Belvedere emblems on the fenders, so they did a very, very nice job on the little details of this. Even the chrome on the B pillar, or C pillar, I should say, because this is a post car. They did paint the tail lights, though, and then they did another Plymouth emblem on the rear deck lids. So, very nicely done. I wish this thing would focus a little better. There we go. Even the chrome trim on the top of the deck lid was good. Yeah, I'm a little disorganized tonight because eh, it's like a different area that I'm shooting my videos. So it's a little complicated to do this good without shaking the camera. Let me turn it just a little more. We only got a couple more guys. Sorry it's going so long, but I, I said I can't just cut some of these guys short. They're very special to me this is my favorite charger my favorite year b body 71 actually my favorite year for mopars overall is 71 and with the b's the e's and even the a's um so yeah this is a very beautiful car the rt this is the first year that they merged the Super B and the Charger together. The Super B used to be based on a Coronet, but 71, they put the option on a Charger. So it was a Charger Super B, and it would not have had the louvers in the door. Only the RTs had the louvers on the door. So this is my favorite color combo, too. The Hemi Orange with the black vinyl top, the black stripes, black going, and it has the air grabber hood. Hideaway headlights, very cool car. In my showroom in the dealership, if you noticed it earlier, uh, the Super B version of this car is in there. And you can see the doors, there's no louvers. So very nicely done by Greenlight, my favorite charger that I have in my collection. So the next few here, we got four left, guys. So... Next one is the 70 Challenger. I just love the way this car looks with the body match uh, color on the stillies with the dog dish hubcaps with the Pentastar emblem. No spoiler, kind of subtle looking sleeper look, but it does have the shaker hood. And it's just very mean looking, I think. Has the sleeper look, but still has that, you know, sleeper, but I mean business type of look. So very beautiful car, especially the Plum Crazy. I really dig this purple. I love the high impact colors that Mopar use. That's one of the things I really dig about Mopar. So next one is a... Gold Series Johnny Lightning. This is the one I was telling you guys about when we were unboxing the Duster the other day. Um, as you can see, highly detailed chassis on this one. Painted green to match the body color, just like a real Mopar. Uh, strobe stripe across the roof, air grabber hood. The only thing I have against this car is it's a little bit small for 164th. It's not so accurate for... 164 scale um but still it's beautifully done um this one actually has the painted bumpers too which was an option back in the early 70s some of these had the paint painted bumpers to match the body color um and then sometimes the front bumper was like an endura bumper it was actually like rubber instead of being metal and painted they actually used a plastic style, kind of like they did with the Camaros uh, as an option in 69. They're super rare, but you could get the Enduro bumper on a 69 Camaro and the 71 Roadrunner and Plymouth. Uh, the GTO, and they're actually a uh, factory with those plastic Enduro style bumpers, like the 68 through 72. So, very beautiful car. This is by far my favorite Mopar. The 71 Plymouth B-Body is my favorite. I really like the 72s also, but 71s, I just like the light, tail lights better, and I like the marker lights better. Um, just that three-cube look. 
In 72, they changed to the exposed marker lights that kind of just set on top of the fender. Actually, every single Mopar after, uh, well, in 72, all the way through the 90s, used the same part number marker lights. Uh, even some of the trucks and Ram chargers used the same marker lights as a duster and challenger and whatever. They all used it. It was one of the cost cutting things in 72 for Mopar. So here's another modern Mopar. This is the one that was in my top 10 of my all time favorites in my collection. The all black uh, modern Challenger. I'm not sure. I think it's like a 2011 or 2012. This is a very killer looking car. It looks very evil, sinister type of look to it very nice i don't usually like all blacked out cars but this one is very uh fitting with the matte black finish a gloss black stripes and then the gloss black wheels looks very good so another killer job from green light on this one so last but not least what Mopar Challenge would be without Christine. So, really dig these old 58 Plymouths. 57s are cool too, but I really love the 58 Fury Belvedere uh, big Plymouths. This is the Maijo Release Red Chrome, which is beautiful up close in person. It's even beautiful on the camera too. So, um, this kind of resembles like the Johnny Lightning holiday cars when they did the chrome on them. This is very nice. I was debating on whether or not to use this one, my Ultra Red Chase Christine, or the just regular Silver Screen Edition Auto World. It, it was no a brainer with using the Auto World as the Christine casting of choice, but it was just which rendition, and the Red Chrome won it for me. So, this is my Mopar challenge, guys. Sorry it took so long, but as I said, it's something that I had to do in detail and as I said it was extremely hard to get down to these 20 that you can see here in the parking lot so it was very very hard to do this um so uh, if you liked it please like the video please share the video and if you have not subscribed yet remember to do so um and I know there's another challenge going on. I will try to do it maybe next weekend. And then maybe I can come up with something myself for you guys. Uh, Monday, we'll be doing a premium unboxing as usual. Uh, it will be some trucks from Auto World and probably Hot Wheels. So we'll take a look at some newer release and older release uh, premium trucks from those two brands. So thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe and see you on Monday.